You know, what is a revolution? Do any of us dare to think about, well, what does a revolution, revolution look like? Um, what even is a revolution? Um, and I think that it's very easy for us to take um, a stance where we're pointing out all the absurdities in our communities and societies and workplaces, even the evilness of the constructed system that we live under. Um, but to really think about what a new system would look like is somewhat more difficult. Um, and I just wanted to take a look at the word revolution and think about it at its most basic form. Um, the forcible overthrow of a government or social order um, in favour of a new system. Um, or a dramatic and wide-reaching change in conditions and attitudes or operation. Um, all of the, the kind of problems that you just outlined there with people facing zero-hour contracts, giving them absolutely no rights. Um, it's because of a, a system that's been constructed for us, a narrative that we don't own. And I really love the idea of, um, of overthrowing this orthodoxy, um, which would transform the way in which workers see themselves and see other workers. Um, I think we all would be in agreement that something has to change because our society really suffers from a sickness and this sickness is, is contagious and it's definitely paralyzing and cruel. In this country we throw away 15 million tonnes of food each year whilst children go to sleep hungry. Um, the sanctions regime that this government is currently um, pushing through um, has brought people being left destitute without money for months and months and months. And what I wanted to question was when as a country did we have the discussion about that, about a moral choice? Um, when were we asked if it was okay to change the framework from with, we, with it, we live within? Um, and to say yes or no um, as to whether to leave people destitute by the state. When was it decided that men would occupy space and power over women? Because um, this is a system that, that quite a lot of women actually support. Um, and it wasn't a God-given, right? It wasn't anything divine. This has been kind of constructed for us before our very eyes. Um, and the result of this imbalance um, sees 85,000 women raped every single year. And just one in 38 of the major sex crimes that happen in this country lead to a conviction. So I think when we've got a society where we see people sick with nerves and waiting for a knock on the door from a bailiff, um, a medieval practice of, 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 claiming, um, of claiming back money, um, and these are the working poor that this is happening to, um, we must start to question well, what kind of system has been constructed for us. I mean, the working people, the working poor, can get fines now for occupying a middle lane of a motorway, um, for dropping a fag foot on the floor, for parking somewhere too long, um, late library boots, not having a correct ticket on the train, dropping litter, being overdrawn in the van. But, not for evading £285 million a year. Philip Green of the Arcadia Group, who um, doesn't treat his workers very um, nice either, he owns Topshop, Burton's, Dorothy Tip Perkins, he steals from our economy each year. And we don't really question that. We don't really, you know, storm Topshop. I know UK Uncut do a, a very good job of occupying Topshop at times. But he steals from the economy. You drop a fag foot and you get a £60 fine. It seems a really perverse system that we've created. And we've kind of accepted this narrative. Um, we've accepted the narrative that the working poor, unemployed workers, deserve the very least. Um, and I don't think any policy could de depict this better than, than the latest outrageous policy of, of the bedroom tax, um, or as they would like us to call it, the under-occupancy charge. Um, because actually this policy is based on the premise, com in complete opposition to what beverage as aspire for for working people, that actually us as the, the scum of the earth, if you like, we deserve the very minimum that actually um, we don't deserve to have a spare bedroom, we don't deserve to have a guest over for the night. Because actually behind the door of a social home is somebody who's idle. Never mind if they were just laid off yesterday, they're idle, so now they must be taxed on their spare bedroom. 
We've accepted, and I think this is probably the greatest challenge for our generation, that actually the marketplace can be involved in human rights. Um, we are allowing profit to be made from pain, um, and, and the 358 contracts that Virgin Care has with the NHS shows us that. And actually this is an attack on our class, on the working class, because a, a universal healthcare system gave working people options and, and opportunities and, and choices. So going back to this concept of the revolution, and the revolution doesn't just take place in workplaces, because it also takes place for, should take place for people who are out of work. Um, I believe the revolution should begin in our own mind. Um, we must become absolutely critical creatures. We must not accept this elitist mantra um, which is forced down our throats, which serves only to benefit those who despise us, essentially. Um, and we must have a confidence and boldness that actually our people are the ones that create the wealth of a nation. We're the ones that you know, get people well after they've been sick. Um, and we invent and create. Um, and we must ooze with confidence for this new revolution in the workplace to be successful. All of the rights that you were talking about there, they're not, they're not revolutionary. They should be absolutely the norm. Um, and we must ooze with confidence when espousing this mantra to create almost a new world order. Um, and we must have faith in our own capacities because we are the many and they are the few. Thank you very much.